Hey everyone, Power Red Heal here, and today we have a Priest Season of Discovery Deep Dive. And this is going to be specifically for uh, Phase 1 of Season of Discovery, which I would consider the 1 to 25 bracket that we have right now. Um, it's going to be different than the Rune Guide in that the runes, we basically just went over the runes explicitly and talked about kind of the differences between the runes, which ones we might use. This is going to be a bit more comprehensive. It's going to be a leveling guide. There's going to be leveling in here, uh, just normal leveling, and then how the runes might affect the leveling uh, with a leveling talent tree, leveling recommendations. And then we're going to move into uh, the level 25 stuff. So kind of like raid and dungeons level 25. We're going to keep it PVE because we just want to like narrow the scope. I may do PVP stuff uh, later on, but I think honestly that would probably come at a time where the game is already out and we kind of have more experience with the PVP and stuff like that. So for right now we're keeping it PVE. And um, <clears throat> yeah, this was requested in the the priest rune guide, the deep dive I did before, so that's kind of why I'm doing it. Uh, sorry about the delay. It took a little bit because I was trying to think about the best way to do this, really. I was like, should I, you know, do a... Should I cover all the brackets? Should I do 60, 50, 40, right? Make the, one big video. But not only do I think that would be, like, way too long, but also I think that... It's just kind of pointless because we're probably going to get new information, I think, as the game progresses. So, for example, like we have information before SOD comes out. And then when we're deep into phase one, we may hear new information about phase two or however they're going to call the phases. Right. So I think that to not to, to try and do like a level 40 um, assessment now is is a bit weird because we know like absolutely nothing or at least we know stuff about the 1 to 25. We may, for example, get at least some of the new runes that are coming or something of that sort, or things may be data mined. I think even if they don't give us direct announcements, we're going to get some data mined stuff. So I think I'm going to wait to do the later brackets and we'll just keep it simple. We'll focus on 1 to 25 as that's what you guys are mostly asking for anyway. Uh, right, so and then like as things come out, we can update this, right? So I can, um, I think how I'm going to do it is I'm going to make an updated version of this for level 25 once we actually get into the raid. <clears throat> um, we get experience with the mechanics and stuff like that. And I'm going to do one for each class, and I'm also going to do uh, like a guide for the raid overall, as well as an encounter by encounter guide. And I'm not sure exactly the format that I'm going to do for some of those yet, but it's going to, we're going to try and cover all classes, essentially, just like we're going to do with here. And, you know, I'll make another one of these sort of pre-videos for level 40, and then once we get to level 40, I will, and we confirm things, I'll make another updated version of that guide. So I'll just kind of keep going on and on like that, and we'll, we'll take it one step at a time, that way it's simple. And it's not overly complicated, right? We're not trying to look too far ahead or do anything. Because I don't, I don't want to give, like... I don't, I don't want things to be, like, so speculative that they're useless, right? And I don't want to give completely wrong information either. And uh, speaking of that, I am going to try and do, like, a leveling portion for all of these um, kind of, like, class deep dives. However, I will say that I have by far most experience with the priest class. Um, especially recently, I did a lot of hardcore priest leveling because I was doing professionals, and I found that I really liked priest as like a class to just level for a professional because it's very AFK, um, which is like kind of nice. Like when you're just trying to get the levels in, you know what I mean. So I, I did a lot of experimentation with like what kind of like using. Uh, different rotations and stuff like that and how certain wands feel at certain points. So this is going to be a bit more of a comprehensive guide and some of the other ones I'll make note of it in the guide but they're just not going to be quite as fleshed out in the leveling portion at least. I think the analysis in terms of the level 25 stuff should still be spot on so you guys don't have to worry there. But I always let you guys know like if I'm not um, sure on something. Not that I'm necessarily sure about you know, everything here as well, like, right, like a lot of things can change, we don't have all the numbers, we don't have the encounters, 
So I'm not trying to sound like arrogant on the priest front, front or anything like that. It's just that I more have I have a lot more experience with the priest, um, specifically in leveling, right? So if I'm doing something where I think my knowledge or experience is not up to snuff as much, you know, I will let you guys know and uh, maybe suggest that he, if you really want to delve into the leveling on Shaman, for example, like you seek another source. I think a good example of this is that like when I've leveled my Shamans in the past, I pretty much just enhance level them to 60. But I think the actual optimal way, like I've seen some Shaman guides, is like you transition to Elemental at, like around 40 when you get your 40 talent or something, and it's actually better and quicker. Um, so, yeah, I don't really have a ton of experience doing stuff like that. And like druid leveling can get very involved uh, if you're trying to be like super sweaty with it. Whereas I'm usually leveling this class not as my first class, so it's in a much more chill environment, if that makes sense. So I haven't really like fully min maxed the potential of druids. I think paladin's going to be pretty easy because it's paladin. You're going to get some new strikes, and basically you're going to use those because you didn't have them before, right? But um, yeah, we'll kind of we'll start off here getting into priest leveling and. I think that the thing I want to go over first with priest leveling is just like a wand and how, how to kind of basically get your wand because wand is, is the most important thing on priest by far. It does a large percentage um, of your early damage and you're kind of like direct nukes are not as strong as like a mage per se so it's really important to have that filler in there. Uh, I think you can equip the wand at like level 5 or 6 but pragmatically for a fresh server especially, you're probably not going to have your wand to maybe like from the level ranges of 8 to 10 is around when you get it. And you basically get your wand by getting uh, enchanting and um, enchanting and tailoring. And you want to get, I think it's like 40 linen cloth is kind of like the sweet spot that people tend to go for. And you craft, uh, I believe it's like a certain robe that costs like a very small amount of linen cloth. There's like guides for this that you can look up. It's like really simple and really fast. But basically like you disenchant the guide or you just disenchant the, uh, the robes and you get materials that you can then make the wands out of. And in some cases you, you can make like five wands. In rare cases you won't get the material even with like 40 linen or whatever. So it is a little bit RNG centric but I think for the most part getting a wand really won't be too difficult and it's something you should really focus on because it's extremely powerful and to not have it is just miss out on a large part of your damage and wands in general stay a pretty strong part of your play style I would say um, the whole way through really but in particular even up and through the 40s, your wand is pretty good. It, it, it definitely is the most insane at like level 5 or 6. Like so if you could, if you were starting a new priest on a server that wasn't fresh and you buy a wand off the auction house, you're going to see an insane like power spike in your kill times versus if you didn't have the wand at 5 or 6. But by the time you get to like level 40 or 50, um, the wand is doing much less of a percent of your damage. But it's obviously still important as like a supplementary um, damage component, right? So that that's kind of like the spiel about wands and how important they are. And with that, we're going to move into the talent calculator. And we're kind of going to show you. So as you could expect, since wands are so important, wand specialization is basically the first thing you're going to want to max. Now, I would say the core for any priest leveling build is wand specialization and spirit tab. You can see if you, I'll just max this so you can see, this is a great bonus. Um, now there's sometimes debate within the community over like which one of these you max first or do you like put, like some people do this, right? They do one, this, this is getting too cute with it, right? The reality is that the best thing to do is to max wand specialization because wand is a extremely high percentage of your damage early. And I feel like it even starts to kind of like fall off somewhat quickly. So therefore, like, you really want this as soon as possible to maximize the damage at those lower levels when the wand is strongest. Um, you know, it'll, it's still going to be strong into the 20s and stuff like that, into the 30s. But having this with 
uh, like a good wand, especially at I think level 11 or level 13 it is. I believe it's 13 actually. You can get the greater magic wand or something of that sort and getting having like three or four points in this at level 13, it's like four points, right? Could get the 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah. And then having that wand, you'll have like an insane insane damage at that point. Uh, so you really want to maximize damage in that spot. And then after that, you come over and you max Spirit Tap next. And these are definitely the core abilities for, or the, the core talents for priest leveling, because there's nothing else that's really going to compare to the power spikes you get with either of these. The regen is, is just incredible. And the fact that you're able to um, regen while casting still is also really nice. And we're kind of going to get into the nuances of that in a little bit. But outside of that, um, so we have six points left. Now, one thing you could do is you could say, like, well, I like Inner Focus, right? So I'm going to basically get Inner Focus. But the problem is, see, Inner Focus is thought to be really good, and it is really good, because the thing with Spirit Tap is that you notice how even though you're getting half the benefit while casting, it's still kind of like you're nerfing yourself a bit, right? Whereas if you use this and you make it so that um, your mana doesn't, like you basically didn't use any mana to cast the spell, it doesn't count as a cast, right? So your mana regen actually continues um, with Spirit Tap when you're combining it with Inner Focus. So a lot of people would like look at that and they'd be like, oh, you know, like, Inner Focus is... It, it's got good synergy with this sometimes. It's, yeah, it's a two-minute cooldown, but you're not necessarily always going to have to... Or three-minute cooldown, sorry. But you're not necessarily always going to have to be healing yourself anyway, right? So it's great for those moments where you can heal and it doesn't interrupt this. The problem is, if you look, your level's 25 here already, right? So <laughs> it's basically kind of useless to shoot for that because you're already leveled at that point. So instead what you want to do is you kind of want to put, I would say at least one point into Shadow Focus and probably two points, uh, especially at this like level bracket, just to make sure you don't get any resists. Um, I think both two points in here you should have like a 1% resist against pretty much every mob you're going to be fighting. Uh, and then, I mean, I mean, I guess technically if you're trying to kill things like above your level at 25, you could invest more into this. Um, this would be the by far the best spell to probably invest into, but I think, you know, for now, this is uh, pretty good to have one or two points in here. I'm probably going to put two. Um, and then after that, I would say it's pretty... You only have four points left, right? So it's pretty much up to you where you want to spend your points. I think a lot of people, the no-brainer is going to be to dump two points into Improved Shadow Word Pain. And I don't think that Improved Shadow Word Pain is bad at all. But uh, as I'm going to break down some of like, the leveling rotations, you'll kind of see maybe why um, I won't be putting points into this. Or I'm not really sure if I will or not at this current point, but I'll kind of elaborate on the pros and cons. But basically what I want to say is that if you look at a bunch of other priest guides, right, you're going to see people take this for sure, I think, in the, the leveling spec. And I don't think it's a bad talent, like I said. However... It's a great time to point out that whenever you're doing anything, whether it be in gaming, in life, in sports, etc., right? Always, always, always. It, it's totally okay to follow a guide like this. And, you know, especially if you're newer, you're looking for a place to start. That's why people come to these guides, right? They, they want to get a jump start. They kind of want to get caught up to speed. And it makes perfect sense. It's completely logical. But if you are, and for some people, the amount of efficiency doesn't really matter, right? So, you know, at, at the end of the day, putting points in this or not is not a make or break decision. It's not going to make your leveling terrible. It's probably not going to make your leveling great. So if you're just looking to level at like a, you know, a normal, moderate pace, there's nothing wrong with tossing some points in here. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. But if you are trying to have like inefficient like looking for like what's the most efficient way to spend my points and stuff like that if you're that type of player. You really do have to not... You can't really just copy what somebody else's spec is necessarily. There's going to be some cases where, um, you know, 
the talents that you take, kind of like with these two, right? These are almost like the mandatory ones. But in a lot of cases, there's things that are more dependent on the situation. And I think Shadow Word Pain is like a great example of that, improved Shadow Word Pain. So this is basically just going to depend on are things dying in your normal Shadow Word Pain, right? And I think in a lot of cases, things are pretty much going to be dead before you even get full value from your normal Shadow Word Pain around this level range. Um, so extending your Shadow Word Pain by two ticks, while theoretically sounds really good, Right, and there's not really that much else that seems to add a lot of value. So even from a comparative sense, you're like, well, this is by far the best thing. But it may actually be, in fact, doing nothing for you uh, if the mob is already not surviving to the end of pain. Right. So I, I think the best thing I can say when looking at guides and like, there's going to be a lot of guides for season of discovery, not just mine. You're probably going to look at mine, other people's, and stuff like that. And it's always good to take an in information. But don't ever be afraid to like question the person or, you know, kind of like think of things, think things through for yourself. Um, and if something is like clearly not working for you, you can see that you're clearly not getting benefit and somebody says to take it, then just don't take it, right? It's, it's that simple in a lot of cases. Um, and I think this is going to be one of those talents where depending on how you're doing your, your rotation, like some people are going to benefit from it, some people aren't. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind while you're leveling. And if you think you need more duration, take it. If you don't, you don't. I will say that, you know, this brings you to around level 23. And that is when the mobs start to get a little bit tankier. So you have a greater chance of this being effective at 23 than it would be at like, um, you know, 17 or something like that, right? If you had put five points in here off the rip or 60 and then put two points in here. So I do think it has a better chance that you're getting it around like 23, but still it may not be that useful. And then for your last points, you can put them in like anything. You can put them in Martyrdom, wouldn't be bad. Um, you can put them in Imp Shield if you wanted to, or Imp, uh, Imp Fort. Um, you can put it in Imp Shield if you want. Uh, you could do this. This is, this, I think like honestly, this Martyrdom or this is pretty it's gonna be pretty good but at this point to be honest you only have two levels to go so it's not gonna be really that big of a deal and stuff like this while it's good you're probably not gonna be casting a lot of heals like during the actual fighting so you're probably not gonna get a ton of pushback and if you do happen to need to cast heals and you die it's not really a big deal because it's not hardcore right <laughs> you just you're probably not gonna be dying very often as priest so one death or something not really gonna set you back so uh yeah, you can... I, I think another thing, too, is maybe you could put some points in Blackout as well, which would maybe be decent. But, uh, yeah. I think this is basically the core, and then you can kind of go and do what you want from here, right? So now I'm going to break down, like, the leveling rotation, I would say. And, like, a lot of this is going to depend on the type of wand you have, Right, and kind of like what you're looking to accomplish, whether it be questing or grinding. Um, a lot of, I did a lot of testing with grinding, which I think tends to be the better type of testing because if something works with grinding, it's going to work with um, leveling, right? Like basically any type of rotation used for grinding, you can actually just add things to it and it makes it better for leveling. And the reason for that is because when you're leveling, you're typically not killing as quickly or like chain killing as fast as you are with grinding. So you can afford to put more damaging spells into the monster and deplete your mana more, go mana negative, how I would call it. And you're still going to be fine because by the time you're running from one mob to another, you have more of a chance to like recover that mana, especially with Spirit Tab being active, right? Whereas like if you're grinding, a lot of times you really do want to hit that sweet spot where you're not, you know, it's not going to be worth maybe casting that extra spell to get a little bit more damage when it's really hurting your mana pool. So I think basically up until you get your wand, you are going to be, you know, casting smite and then casting pain and you cast a shield before that. And then you basically, you're probably going to cast another smite and then you're going to see the mob's HP, and if the mob is low, you're just going to finish it with autos from your mace. And if the mob 
isn't low, you put another smite into it. The reason why you want shield um, in the early levels is basically just so that your smites can actually not get pushed back, right? Because you're not going to have a wand early on. So being able to just get the damage out through smite is, is strong. Uh, unfortunately, you're going to have to drink a lot before you get your wand. It's just kind of like the reality of the situation. Priest is not really a good nuker. And although Shadow Word Pain is a good dot overall, it's just not particularly effective at like a super low level. Uh, in some cases, it may be worth even looking to see like how many ticks of pain you're actually getting. So having an add-on that shows the duration of pain is really good because you can see the duration as the mob is dying. And if you're noticing that the pain is dying with like three, or the mob is dying with pain having like three ticks left or something like that, you're probably better off casting another smite. I mean, you can do the math yourself, right? Because you can look at how much damage uh, your pain does on the tooltip and then look at your smite and then check kind of like the mana cost. And even doing some quick like napkin math in your head, you can kind of work out like, okay, like I should probably just smite here or something like that, right? It's really not that complicated. Um, so it's something to just be, to keep in mind, right? Because some people have this tendency of like, oh, I have this spell, so it should always be used, right? And that's not necessarily true in every case. Um, so it's always best to just kind of check things out yourself. But that's probably going to be how you're going to be approaching the early game. And once you get a wand, um, it's probably going to be like a smite into pain into wand. And a lot of times that will make decent enough use of your Shadow Word Pain, like it'll get it kind of close to using all of its six, so it's pretty mana efficient. And then um, your wand's still doing a large percentage of the damage there. And the idea is basically that there's this concept with Priest with the, called the five second rule. And I made a video, when I was talking about the rune, uh, when I did, did the rune video, sorry, I talked about the five second rule a little bit. And... The five second rule there, I, I basically was kind of overlooking it, saying it's you know it's not really something you use a lot of end game because we were talking about end game. But to be honest, for leveling, that's where you do want to implement the five second rule as much as possible. And what the five second rule is, is if you haven't cast it in five seconds, your regen gets a bump. You can think of it as like that. Like there's a state where you can still be in combat, but if you haven't done an action like casting. And it's complete, uh, completed casts, I believe, is the actual thing. So starting casting a spell won't incur this, but completing the cast will. So, yeah, that will like interrupt your mana regen, essentially. And if you don't cast for five seconds, you, you get that bump in mana, in mana regen. So the nice thing about the Smite into Pain is that it kind of ends your casting sequence kind of early so that your regen starts kicking in earlier so yeah, you took some mana to shield, um, smite, and then pain, but as soon as the pain gets on the mob and you're auto-attacking it with the wand, like you're already gaining mana back five seconds after. You know what I mean? You're at, you're at the full capacity you can be for regenerating combat. And then you still have the time when you're running to the next mob, right? So the idea is you're kind of almost full by the time you're running to the next mob. And the shield makes it so that you don't actually need to... Um, heal yourself after pull so much, right? Because in a lot of cases, you're just taking a little bit of damage over the shield. And in some cases, that damage can be actually uh, healed up through regen by the time you engage the next mob as well, right? So that's basically how you're going to be doing the uh, your rotation once you get a wand. And then eventually you're going to get mind Mind Blast, I think that's like 10 or 12 or something like that. And this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting. Um, and it's going to really depend on like what you're fighting, how many levels either above or below it is, and, and stuff like that, right? Because if you open the, the, the typical full DPS rotation at this point would be exactly what you think it is, where you shield yourself, you smite, you Mind Blast, <clears throat> you put pain on, and then you start autoing with the wand. Now the problem with that is that uh, it kind of costs a lot of mana to do that, and the pain is probably not getting full anywhere close to full value by this point. Um, and it just makes sense to use the pain last because 
you can kind of skip the global cooldown if you use it last. Whereas if you use it first, you have to suffer the global cooldown. Because the thing is, you're not casting anything else after the pain, right? Uh, you're just going right into one. So it's kind of like the perfect um, place to use pain. So you can't really use the pain earlier um, without also punishing yourself a bit. And to be honest, it kind of has the same problem anyways. You'll get maybe like one more tick of the pain if you were to do that. But you're still doing too much of the mob's health as a percent with your other two abilities, your smite and your mind blast. So a lot of times you're either doing... Um, you're still doing like smite into... Um, smite into pain and then autoing. Or you can do... Mind Blast into Pain, and then Auto. And then the other option you can do is um, Smite into Mind Blast and Auto. So in some cases you won't even be putting Pain on. And I think that's the one I tend to use in a lot of cases. But it again, it's just going to depend on what you're fighting. So you kind of have to make a choice and a call depending on the situation there. One thing to keep in mind is that... If you are using primarily shadow spells, so if you open with mind blast and you go into pain, you and you have two points in this, you're gonna get resisted like much less than you know, like having to your smite's gonna get resisted more than those abilities. Right now it's not gonna be super significant, but it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I would say that most likely that's not going to be relevant in most cases, though. So, like, you're not going to make your decision over what rotation you're going to use based on that 90% of the time. It's going to be the mob's health, the mob's HP, and, like, how much damage you're doing to it, essentially, with those abilities. And you can kind of just, like, get a rough mana efficiency in your head. A lot of these things are going to be very similar. So, like... It's not like you're going to be killing things like five seconds slower or doing it one way. Most likely, they're going to probably be within a couple seconds. So you don't have to fret about this necessarily too much unless you're trying to super sweat, I would say. Um, I'm mainly just mentioning this stuff because a lot of people are, would do that full rotation, and by the time you cast the pain at the end of there, a lot of times like that mana is just going into the void. Um, now, if you're kind of like questing and you're killing mobs in one area that you know, there's not many of those mobs you kill one and it's going to be like 20 seconds maybe 10 seconds before you get to the next one doing that whole style of dumping all your abilities even with the pain at the end there makes a little bit more sense because any additional damage you can get per global becomes better because your mana is going to be back to full anyways right so that's kind of like where the questing style has a little bit of an advantage in terms of allowing you to just dump your full kit into a mob. But even when you're questing in a lot of cases, you're still going to be killing things fairly fast, and I think that it's probably better to just kill things, like, efficiently rather than to dump everything in there, right? And then, like, the next um, part of the chain comes with uh, Holy Fire, which is level 20. And when you once you get Holy Fire at level 20, you're going to start using that to open... And then a lot of times what I do is Holy Fire into Mind Blast, Pain, and then Auto. Um, because keep in mind, now having those extra, the, like the extra spell in there is a bit more important because you're level 20, so the mobs, your wand is doing like a less percentage of the mob's damage overall. Like every hit is less percent of its health than it was at like level, uh, level 12 or something like that. So it also is probably the time where your actual wand itself is going to be falling off because you're probably not going to have access to like, you know, there's, there's a blue wand that you can get, I think at like level 16, but you're probably not going to have that on Fresh Start. You know what I mean? So if you might be stuck with a level 13 wand still, and now you're kind of going to be starting to feel it a bit, you may have to be incorporating more spells in there. So that's typically how, um, how I would go about things. Um, but you could also, theoretically, if you needed more damage, you could go Holy Fire, Smite, Mind Blast, Pain. But I think in most cases, uh, you're going to run into the same problems I mentioned in the other bracket if you do that, where your pain efficiency is just going to be, like, very, very bad. Um, 
Like you're not gonna, it's not really worth casting. Um, unless kind of like, again, you're doing the questing route where you're basically regenerating to full. Or unless like you're, obviously you would do that if you're trying to kill like a named mob or an elite mob or something like that, right? You'd always use your full rotation. And something to keep in mind with these like leveling rotations is you can mix and match them. That's not a bad thing because how I like to look at things is there's like two states um, or I guess three, right? Where the first one is mana negative. So whatever you're using is like costing you more mana than you're regening. The other one is mana positive, right? Where you're gaining back more mana than you're using, so you're always at 100% mana. And then there's mana neutral, right? Where you're basically spending the same mana that's like you're regening it perfectly, essentially. And the idea is you want to try and get as close to mana neutral as possible, I'd say, in most cases. But sometimes that's not, you're not really going to, it doesn't work out perfectly where you have that rotation where you're able to just be like mana neutral, for example. So what you can do in that case is you can um, start out with the mana negative rotation, right? Where you add that extra spell in. So even though it's not giving you that much damage efficiency or mana efficiency, you are killing at least a little bit quicker while you're doing those types of rotations. And then maybe you do that for one or two mobs, you notice yourself getting a little bit low mana wise and that's when you uh go into the pot mana positive rotation right and that's where something like where improved shadow word pain can help right because including an improved shadow word pain into when you're trying to go mana positive is really good right because it basically just allow you to cast less spells and you rely more on the pain damage uh, and the wand damage to carry you to regenerate you a bit so you can kind of do like more bursty pulls and then once you get low, you switch to that mana positive style for a couple pulls until you like kind of close to maxing out your mana, and then you rotate back. I would say like you never really want to be sitting at 100 mana, but um, at 100% mana. However, like, like there are some cases in the leveling where you are pretty close to what I would consider being mana neutral, where maybe you're regening slightly more mana than you're spending. And in those cases, I feel like it's pretty much fine to just use that rotation all the time if it's easier, right? Because it, it's so close to that line, you're basically sustaining it like almost perfectly that being at 100% mana is not really like a terrible thing because to not be at 100% mana would incur a large penalty to your mana. And you can always kind of do that... Um, as well, like if you think you're even just a little bit mana positive, you can you can dump for one or two mobs and then just go back to that slightly mana positive rotation in order to eventually bring you back up to full and you just repeat the cycle. So that's kind of how I approach leveling. It, it's very dynamic and it's like you should be like looking at your spell book specifically. Um, you're going to get different ranks of these spells, and that's part of the reason why it's difficult to give you like a very solid rotation because. When you combine the ranks of the spells with the levels of the mobs that you may or may not be killing, depending on if you're grinding, if you're questing. Um, some people are using rested XP, where that would be, you know, if everybody was using rested XP, you could provide an, an easier guide for that, right? Or if everybody was grinding these specific mobs at these specific levels, you could provide an easier guide. But that's not going to be the case, right? A lot of people are just kind of like freeballing it, or they're doing a mix of grinding and questing. So... To really cover all bases, I'm just trying to give you the tools and make you aware of certain things. And then when you guys get in game, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's like this difficult. It might sound difficult, but you can just easily, it's like you're just paying attention a little bit to this mob you're killing. Okay, maybe I don't need to use the spell here, actually. Like, we're killing it just fine anyway. You know, I can drop this and be good. I won't have to drink, you know? Um, or maybe I just don't need to use pain here at all, or maybe I don't have to put these two points in improved pain because we're killing this mob anyway, and stuff like that, right? So just stuff to keep in mind while leveling, and I think that's kind of like the best way to approach it is give you guys the tools, right, and then let you make the decisions um, because your leveling experience will undoubtedly be different than mine and, and other priests as well, even if there are a lot of similarities. So... That's that's basically my take on leveling. Um, remember, 
this first, then this, both these are core, two points in this, or one point at least, and then, you know, have fun, put stuff wherever you, you want, because the, the next points aren't going to be in that big of a difference. Martyrdom, I think, is pretty underrated, actually, because um, it, it could help in a pinch, you know, but also Blackout's good, more hits good if you're killing higher stuff, so just a little bit of a reiteration there. Now, oh, I want to mention one more thing about Spirit Tap, actually, before we move on, which is basically um, the whole shielding thing before you start the pull. So initially, when I'm telling you this, you may be thinking like, okay, like, it's not really that important to do, right? And earlier on, it's not the most important thing, but once you get Spirit Tap going, uh, pre-shielding yourself before a pull is really, really nice because basically if after every two pulls you're having to heal or something like that, like I said, we're cutting into this um, spirit tap bonus, right? Because we're now maybe having to heal ourselves once or twice, right? And if you're healing yourself twice, now you basically like for like 10 seconds, you, you've disrupted that mana regen, right? Whereas if you just toss a shield on yourself then you toss it on, and yeah, it's going to impede this for like five seconds, you know, but it's not the end of the world. It's, it's better than impeding it for like 10 seconds if you have to cast like multiple heals and stuff like that, and it basically just allows your spirit tap to get more value, right? Um, because you're not having to actually heal like you're... So you're not casting as much, essentially. That, that, that's the, the last thing I kind of want to say about Spirit Tap and why Power Word Shield in particular, um, to start off a pull, tends to be good. Um, so yeah. We can now talk about level 25. So I think we're going to actually stay on this page for a second because we are going to go over potential like specs first. And I kind of have, like, three of them, I would say. Um, I'll get into, like, the... I'll tell you the the kind of weird one first, and then we'll go into, like, the stronger one. So, here's the thing about Spirit Tap, right? I think this ability can be very good for dungeons. I personally use this for dungeons up until, like, I think pretty much, like, the whole game, honestly. In uh, Well, I think it was really more, like, ZF was where I was noticing that it was kind of, like, starting to fall off. And when I say fall off, um, it's not that the ability itself fell off, because the ability actually gets even better the more gear you get, right? So the more you level up and you have more access to spirit, it improves. But the idea is being able to get kills when you're higher level becomes harder, right? Because you're typically trying to wand things to death or maybe, like, snipe them with a Mind Blast, but you have to be careful with the Mind Blast because it kind of takes a lot of mana, so it's like, you know, yeah, I proc this mana regen on me, but I also use, like, 200 mana on this Mind Blast, right? So you have to be a bit careful on, like, the Calculus there. But yeah, I'd mostly try and, like, finish things off with my Wand in Dungeons in order to proc this. And at the, about the time of Beyond ZG, it gets a little bit difficult to do that sometimes because the wand just does such a small percentage of like a 40-some elite mob's HP that it's just more likely to be killed by somebody else. And unless people are like super into facilitating you, which most of the time they're not going to be, even though it is more efficient, right? Um, you know, it can be kind of difficult to use this, but in lower level dungeons especially... Uh, like Azure leveling, and then probably even the level 25 dungeons themselves. This is like a very powerful tool to have where you can just uh, wand down a low mob and now you've got like a, like a burst of regen, you could think of it, which is really, really cool. So th this is something that you could do. You put five points in here, and then there's two specs that actually... So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to show you the spec that I pair with this, but I'm going to show you the other two specs first, and I'm going to show you the reason why I only pair one of the specs with this. So there's three specs in total. Um, so the first spec is this, right? 
and then you would probably either put the point two points in here or two points in here, something like that. Right, and that would be the discipline spec. Now the problem that you can see immediately, right, is if you try and pair the discipline spec with the spirit tap, right, then you can't get meditation, which is the whole point of going disc. And if you get meditation, you can only put um, two points in this, and you're already level 25 when you have this, right? And it's only 40%. So this doesn't really work well, I feel like, with the uh, the discipline spec. Because um, the whole point of getting it is meditation, really, right? And you're not able to get that. Or if you are able to get it, you're sacrificing most of the spirit tap, or you're getting it super late. So if you are going to use the spirit tap spec, um, I would do something like this, probably. Yeah, where this would be, so it's like holy and then uh, shadow, right? So you put the, you start with the five points in spirit tap and then you go into the holy tree. Um, because that way, the whole point of this build, well, there's a couple points, is Divine Fury and Inspiration, but realistically, you're not going to need real, uh, Inspiration for dungeons. Um, and so the main thing is that you've got your 5 second reduced cast time, and you actually still get that. You're still getting use out of the cast time, even starting at level 19, right? You're making it lower. So that's kind of like what I would do there. Uh, if you are going to go spirit tap. Now I think for raids, this is going to be very probably difficult to use because the mobs are going to have a lot of HP because they're going to be 10-man elites. And I don't know how many adds you're going to get during boss fights, right? It might be okay during trash, but I think it might just be better to have like a more well-rounded spec overall. Um, because I, I just don't... If you could consistently execute mobs if people are letting you kill those mobs with a wand then i could see it but i just don't think that's going to be the case people are going to want to finish things move on to the next pack etc so you're probably not going to be able to get a ton of kills and it's just going to have to be a decision you make when you get to level 25 and if you think there's like an opportunity to try it out you can try it out um i think a lot of the respect costs are going to be adjusted they mentioned in this season so that you can mishmash things around a lot that's kind of like the point of the season so that's going to be cool so you know in a worst case scenario you could try this out and if, if you're not able to proc it by killing mobs with your wand then you just switch to one of the more normative specs right so i'll do the discipline one first which is this and obviously the point here is getting meditation right and then um after that, I think I would put two points in Impreneu uh, to round out the spec, because I feel like getting just crit isolated is not that big a deal. This seems like the obvious choice, because it's actually two points, but I, unless there's a boss that is giving you significant unavoidable pushback, I don't really think you take this, because there's no... Um, you know, there's... Like, you shouldn't really be getting tons of pushback to begin with in a raid-type setting. Right, so I would just put the points in, in Impernew and be greedy, but you can obviously pick this up if you want. Now, do I think this is like the best spec, right? Um, probably not. I think especially going into the dungeon, it's like going to be the worst spec, which is the most important time. Because once you have gear, you're probably going to crush this dungeon anyway. Um, so obviously this spec has kind of like the scaling aspect, where this is allowing your mana regen to continue while casting. Right, so the more spirit gear you get, the more powerful this becomes. Um, but, you know, I don't really know if we're going to be doing BFD speed clears, you know, I don't know if that's going to be, like, a super big focus. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this definitely could have, I guess, some potential as a spec if uh, you're kind of like geared out and really focusing on spirit, but keep in mind that at the end of the day, it is only 15% of the mana regeneration, right? So it, it, it's tempting to be like, oh, well, that's the only mana rege regeneration you have, right? So it's like, you got to take that, but it's still a small amount, keep in mind, right? And you, and you have to directly compare it to what we're going to be sacrificing on the holy side. So I think this is, you know, it's fine if you want to play this, but 
I would. I don't think it's going to be strong going into the dungeon. I think the other spec is going to be stronger. Um, but I mean, realistically, you're going to be able to heal these dungeons as kind of like whatever you want, you know. But I think especially going in there with greens, you're just not even getting much benefit out of meditation as well, you know. So yeah, let's go and do this. So. I'd probably do, again, like, you know, you, you put the two points in here if you encounter a fight that's annoying and is going to give you pushback. If not, you put it in there. Uh, Divine Fury here. You can put a point in here, probably. And then maybe another one in here. And then improved healing. Right? So, and that's because, like, none of these, like, early point talents are going to do anything uh, for healing priests. But I think this is kind of how I would... Uh, how I build out my character for 25 holy. And the real advantage here is just like playing with Divine Fury and playing without it, you notice a difference, right? And I think it's just going to feel so much better having that 2.5 second heal than having a 3 second heal. That's kind of just like the, the long and the short of it. Um, and then inspiration is unfortunately probably not going to get procced a ton because you're not going to have amazing crit. I mean, you kind of get helped out here a little bit, but you're still not going to have a lot. Uh, if you get the world buff and you go back into the dungeon with the world buff, I think the world buff gives a tiny bit of crit. So that could help too. But um, you know, inspiration is a good talent and basically you can't get anything else that's like better. So that's why you take this. I don't think it's going to be necessary or anything like that, so I don't think it's going to be like, oh, we need like a bunch of priests for inspiration stacking or anything of the sort. Um, but yeah, I uh, I definitely think this spec overall is better, mostly just for Divine Fury. And then this is kind of like a nice little extra bonus. And then, hey, you're, getting, you're cutting your mana costs a little bit here. Right, but it's it's not going to be super uh, helpful. This is is going to be useless unless you're uh, actually using Holy Nova a lot. Um, and the only reason why we really have a point in Holy Nova is because there's not much else to to put a point in there. Right, it's probably worth it to have this just in general um, because the only like you would basically put a point in here, here, or here, or here, which neither none of these are very effective. So having this. The off chance you need it is good, and you don't have prayer of healing yet. So putting a um, a point in here is not like I would I would put the point from here in here if we had prayer healing, but we don't by level twenty five. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's how I finish that one up. Something you guys might be wondering is I think in both of the specs I took improved renew, and uh, there's sometimes like debate over taking. Renew, or people will be like, only the Renew Priest takes the Renew. I think, like, I have the concept of a Renew Priest is, is not really a thing, and I can make that video uh, at some other point. But I think that Renew is a good spell. It just has a lot of limited use. But I think that, you know, would I rather have 15% extra healing on my Renew, or would I rather have 3% crit? I think I'm taking 15% on my Renew every time. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> and like I said, and you don't need to take this in a lot of cases. So assuming you don't need to take this, then you definitely take Imp Renew, right? If you need to take this, then um, there's more of an argument to be made. But I would still just put the points from here into here. And I'd do like the first. So it'd be like to get to the next row, would be two and then three. I'd do that over taking any crit at all. Um because I think that in the situations where Renew is good, it's really good. It's just that there's not a ton of situations, but having the extra healing on it for when the situation is good is always nice. And I think 10 man's uh, Renew is going to be a lot better than, than people think, potentially, at least, depending on kind of like the gear we get and stuff. So that's basically like the talents. This is the one that I would use... Um, primarily, and then you could do the discipline one when you get more gear or something if you want. Um, yeah. So, let's look at some of these spells. So I filtered it by holy, by level 1 to 25, and I'm going to kind of go through and just talk about the stuff that we're not going to be using, most likely.
play right out the gate, right? So Power Word Shield, you're typically always going to use the max rank of Power Word Shield. So you're probably not going to be using the lower ranks because typically the point of Power Word Shield is that you, you are using it to stop like some sort of mechanic or to save somebody. Uh, because or it's a pre-shield right so because it's not an efficient heal otherwise so there's no point in really like down ranking it if that makes sense um i guess like the i the only idea would be like having another version of it on your bar in the sense you didn't have the mana to cast the other one but aside from like a a super niche situation like that you're pretty much just using rank max rank power word shield and just having max rank on your bar would be fine um so you don't need to worry about the other ranks of that rank one lesser heal is just going to be too um i think it's just going to be too weak to really to really do anything i mean you could do some like spotting with this but in reality i feel like you're kind of just padding slash trolling in a lot of cases you know what I mean? Like, that heal will probably... Like, whatever you're putting back, if it's that amount, it probably doesn't need to be put back, or it'll be put back at a later date uh, by some other spell or something like that. Uh, and you're kind of just incurring your uh, your five-second rule thing, right? And uh, by spamming all the time, which at max level, you tend to do a lot more spotting and more spamming. But at this level, like, especially when healing dungeons and stuff... You just don't have a lot of tools in terms of good gear or good talent, stuff like that. And you don't even have access to all your spells. So you don't have access to a lot of plus healing to help with down ranking and stuff. So making the most out of your mana is like a really important part of uh, early game healing, I think. And, you know, spamming a negligible heal spell in order to... It basically is taking you out of the five second rule all the time it's just probably not the best thing to be doing so moving on to lesser heal rank two this one a little bit more application it's only a two second cast so it's not it's going to be a little bit faster than your other spells um i think if you're going to spot with um with anything that's it's going to be probably lesser heal three or lesser heal two this one is just i think a little bit too i think it's just a little bit too low you know what i mean the amount it's actually putting back um yeah it, it's i don't know if it'll be significant enough but you could try using it but i think that lesser heal three um could definitely be used for spotting and stuff like that but again i don't want to overly rely on something like this uh, because I'm kind of wanting to, like, let people get chunked and then heal them back with a larger heal, right? So I can sit um, out of combat, or not out of combat, but out of casting time for a longer period to allow myself to regen. That's typically how I'll play, like, the lower levels. Um, and it's going to be easier to play like that because in a 5-man, you're the only healer, so you don't have to worry about anything getting sniped. And in a 10-man, you're probably going to be, like, one of two healers. So there's a lot more communication you can do on stuff like that, right? Like, you can be like, I've got the tank, you know? And then you can kind of cancel cast, like, a higher rank heal on the tank or something like that. So I think that these lesser heals, I'm just not super convinced that they're going to be, like, super useful. But we'll have to see. I mean, um... We'll definitely have to see. Like, it, it, it's really just a matter of like how much the average HP people end up when they're semi decent raid geared, and then like how much damage they're taking from miscellaneous mechanics, uh, how much damage the boss is hitting the tank for, etc., and stuff like that. But I wouldn't expect to be using these a ton. If so, maybe the second or third rank. Uh, the renews, I think rank one renew is just off the table. Uh, it's just too low. Right, like 45 on a duration, 15 second duration, that's pitiful. Uh, rank 2, we're kind of in the same territory. Um, <laughs> where that's not a big heal over the duration, right? And I think the problem is, is it's like... Okay, so 
this costs, this does 100 healing, right? And it's 65 mana versus this is 45 mana and basically does 100 healing. Now, obviously, you can have more of the other renews out and they're healing at the same time, right? So there's the greater HPS potential there. But I just don't really see, like, they're going to be a situation... I don't really see... And, and you're going to benefit from the, uh, the increased renew talent, right? But I don't see that there's going to be a situation where you're going to be having to cast a ton of renews to like keep up with raid healing. I just really don't. You know, if that is the case, then maybe we re revisit this in the next video, but I think for the most part, you'd actually just be better off using lesser heal rank 2 there, even, right, if you need to heal 100 damage. It's like less mana, and, uh, yeah. And it's probably, it's like, it has a less chance of getting sniped or something like that, right? So I think rank 2 renew, a little bit sketchy. Um, everything else here, obviously, like Dispel Magic, you're just going to use when you need to use, right? Cure Disease, etc. Uh, Flash Heal. So this is something I kind of wanted to talk about um, in relation to the new runes, because we talked about uh, Serendipity being, like, the best... Um, I forget what slot it is. Let's bring it up, actually, because I have it here. Uh, the best chest slot thing here, right? Um, yeah. So... I think with, like, early on in the game, you just can't afford to really be casting Flash Heal that much. So I think that Serendipity is not going to be super great um, earlier on, and you may even take the other talent here. Now, Strength of Soul is not going to be amazing either. Um like, right off the bat, right? But the other two things are for damage dealing, right? So if you're actually taking a rune for healing, it would probably be Serendipity or Strength of Soul. And I think Strength of Soul will actually be what you use probably in Tier 1 because you're just not going to be, like, casting um, multiple flash heals to then get a greater heal out or something like that, I, th I think, in most cases, at least. I'll have to see. But... The thing is, like, typically the reason why I think Serendipity is going to be really good in the late game is because you can use, like, a downranked Flash Heal um, that isn't costing, like, a ton of your mana to then get access to those really mana-efficient heal spells a lot quicker, right? Like, having them come out of one like really quick, one second to 1.5 seconds. But the problem here is you can't really downrank because Flash Heal is rank 1, only, like, that is the first rank, right? And it costs a decent amount of mana, um, as you can see. So we'll just have to see um, how much mana we actually get, how much regen we're able to get. You know, maybe this won't be as bad as we think. Keep in mind that you are sort of close to rank 2 Flash Heal here, probably, because you get this at 20, and you're going to be level 25 in the raid, right? So the next rank of Flash Heal probably comes at 26 or 28, so this is sort of like using a downranked flash in a way. So it's not going to be as bad as like if you got this at level 25 and it did this. Um, and it costs more mana and stuff like that and maybe healed a bit more. But it's probably... I'm thinking it's just not going to be really that, that good. But we'll have to see. <laughs> um, and then going on to Renew. So... This is an interesting part about the flash heal thing, and I'll, I'll talk about it in combined with this renew. So as you can see, both of these are level 20 spells, and level 20 is a big deal because basically how spells work in this game, if you're unfamiliar, is every spell has a spell coefficient. And what the spell coefficient does is it's basically a filter that allows Blizzard to dynamically adjust how one spell versus another benefits from... Uh, either healing power or spell power. And the reason they want to do that is, like, take a mage, for example, right? It's the most obvious. Uh, they want their Frostbolt single target damage to scale as they get a bunch of gear, right? Um, maybe it starts out, let's just say that it starts out at, like, 600, and by Nax they wanted to get 1,200. Completely arbitrary numbers. I know it's probably not that, right? But, you know, they're like, oh, well, we'll give them 600 spell power by the time they get to Nax. And that'll take care of that, you know, it'll, um, it'll basically, 
be doing 1200 damage at that point. Now the problem is, if you don't have spell coefficients, Arcane Explosion is also getting directly 600 spell power. And Arcane Explosion, unlike Frostbolt, isn't target capped, right? And it can hit a bunch of targets, and the value you're getting on that spell power is just way too much. So what they tend to do is they tend to make the spell coefficient kind of like a function of the spell's cast time, as well as, like, in some cases, uh, how many people it can affect. So the idea is, like, a single target, slower cast time spell will usually have closer to a 100% efficiency, like it has a, a, efficient, a coefficient close to um, 100%, which means that 100% of her healing or damage will go with the spell. And then like a quicker cast spell that hits more targets will tend to have a um, a lower coefficient, right? Because you have to keep in mind that like, if, for example, Prayer of Healing is hitting five people, if the coefficient was 100%, it's kind of crazy, right? It'd be more in line to have the, efficient be, the coefficient be 20% because it's hitting five targets. So therefore you're kind of like still getting 100% of the healing value, but it's spread over each target instead of each target fully benefiting from 100% of your plus healing. That'd kind of be like the way to think about it. And there's some exceptions to this, like HOTS, for example, tend to have high coefficients, but that's because they tend to do a lot of overhealing as well, right? So there's like a trade-off with like the HOT mechanic there. And um, basically the reason why I'm mentioning this is because the spell coefficient thing really kicks in at level 20. Um, before level 20, spells have terrible coefficients, and then they get like their normalized coefficient at level 20. So if there is any plus healing available, I mean, we have seen plus healing available, but I don't know how much there's going to be total. But if there's a decent amount of uh, plus healing available from BFD, then, you know, some of these spells like rank 3 renew, rank 1 flash, and then rank 2 heal, for example, these are going to be the spells that disproportionately benefit from that plus healing because the coefficients are actually their normal coefficients, whereas something like rank 2 renew or rank 1 heal have really bad spell coefficients because they're below, um, they're below level 20. So that's something to keep in mind. But the problem is, again, is because we're so close to that, like our level cap is so close to level 20, that it is kind of, like if you try and play by that logic alone, you're going to be casting a lot of high rank spells that cost a lot of mana. And if you're going to be doing that, I think the thing is you just need to be sure you're getting value out of them, right? Because it doesn't matter if rank 2 heal is like, you know, it's the most efficient spell right, because it's a slow cast time spell with a good coefficient post 20 if, like, half the healing is going into overhealing, you know? So you, you do have to uh, still keep stuff like that in mind for sure. But I think Renew could be interesting, like I was saying, because Renew has, like, 100% spell coefficient, um, so it's, it's directly getting all the healing, and... If you have like 100, 150 plus healing from this dungeon, you know, that's a pretty decent, that's like a 300 heal on a 105 mana cost spell. That's not, that's not bad at all. Plus it's getting augmented by the, uh, the, uh, talent here. Although I think this only affects the base, but still, um, you know, it's something. So it's really not that terrible, um... But it's just gonna it's just gonna depend on can you make use of the hot well, right? And I think in ten man you have a better chance. In uh twenty five man or sorry, in uh, five man you absolutely can make use of the hot kind of well. And I think renew like one of the reasons why I, I do think renew could be useful is because renew is a spell that really does help you stay um in that five second roll, right? Because you can heal a tank in a five man to pretty much close to full, you toss a renew on them in like the same global, so you're not really like losing anything uh, in terms of starting your five second roll, right? Because you just cast it to heal and then you cast the renew immediately after, and then um, you're still getting healing to help prevent some of the incoming damage they're taking, but you're not having to cast anything, so you're allowed to stay in that five second rule 
you're you're allowed to like stay in that five second rule a bit longer essentially right and you know that can be a really powerful thing when you're trying to squeeze out every little bit of mana so i think as long as you know you're careful not to overheal too much with something like this uh it could definitely be strong in, in five mans and, and definitely in ten mans too ten mans you have the communication aspect so you can be like you all like renewing these people you know or if you're the only person healing the tank you could be like uh you know you can kind of like use renew to your um to like whatever extent you want essentially right if you know you're not going to be overhealing with it i think that the one thing that makes renew uh trickier too to use on tanks in a higher level that may not be the case in lower level is i don't think that the damage is going to scale like linear linearly in terms of how much percent of health the tank is taking at a lower level versus how much percent of their health they take at a higher level once a tank gets to a higher level in normal classic wow especially if they're these like warrior dual wield tanks that are super squishy um, they'll sometimes take like 3k hits, something insane, right? Which is like 30% of their health in some cases or, or more, to be honest, if they have like 8k health. Uh, they'll take these like huge hits from crits and crushes and stuff like that. And those types of hits make it really hard for a new to be useful because even if your new is ticking like 400 on that target, um, it's just not enough right <laughs> and it also needs to tick at the right time anyways uh so it, it could have just ticked when they were at 100 percent. they get chunked by 3k damage your healers react instantly put them back with like flashes and stuff to full health and if it ticks again they're still at full health but even if it ticks when they're low um it you're not counting like, one of the issues is like you're not ever counting on the hot when there's especially when there's multiple people healing the tank, right? So either the hot itself tends to be doing overhealing, or the hot is almost causing overhealing because you're not sitting there like, oh well, there's a druid hot on this tank, so I can afford to cast like, you know, this shitty, uh, shittier rank of this heal because there's two druid hots and a renew on the tank, so I don't have to worry about it. You know, they're probably gonna tick. Uh, right as my heal hits anyway you know so it's like people aren't thinking like that right because if they don't tick then the tank is just dead <laughs> so the um basically what ends up happening is the hots are kind of actually causing your other heals to overheal right so even if the hot itself isn't doing overhealing it's producing overhealing as a byproduct so that's why renew and hot general can be rough to use on the tank um in like higher level content unless there's a lot of excess mana to go around but in lower level content and uh, where the tank is not going to be taking as large of a percent of his health and damage most likely from these bosses it allows you to like plan around renew a bit more actually and since there's less people trying to heal the tank less people needing to heal the tank in some cases it can only be you um you know then you get full control over how you manages mana efficiency essentially which makes it a lot more powerful so i definitely look out for new long story short um yeah and rank two heal and heal right so i think you could definitely use both of these for sure um i could see rank two or rank one heal being more of like a spot case scenario kind of like this lesser heal and then if you're healing a tank i honestly think using this is not um terrible you basically would it would kind of depend like if the tank is taking a reasonable amount of damage you may just kind of have to almost constantly cast like rank one heal right if he's taking a consistent amount of reasonable damage but if you can let him kind of sit for a bit and um you know, take a couple hits and then start casting the heal. Something like this might be really good because, you know, it allows you, again, just to stay not casting for longer, help you regen a bit of that mana. And keep in mind, you're not going to have all the tools you have at 60 to regain mana, right? You don't have dark runes and stuff like that. You only have your lower level mana potions and maybe like a recombinator or something like that, whatever they're called, a recombinator. I forget what level uh, those are at. You might have like the early ones available but they're very weak right so you're not going to have a ton of opportunity to regenerate a lot of mana um so yeah definitely something to keep in mind there uh i think so i think it'd be like the tank healing 
sort of spell, and then, you know, combined with this, potentially, uh, depends on nature of the fight, how much damage is going out, stuff like that. And then this will be kind of combined with this would be like what you use for spotting. And then renew, you could either kind of like do some raid healing with it. You tell your other healing partner like, you know, I got these people, I got renews on them. Like, don't worry about them. Or you put it on the tank uh, and combine it with rank to uh, heal here in order to stay out of combat for, or stay out of casting for even longer and get more mana gen. Right, so... Um, I think that's kind of like basically the breakdown of the spells. And one thing about that play style of staying out of uh, casting even longer is the better you do that, like the more it hurts this meditation spec, right? Because this is benefiting you while casting. The more time you can spend out of casting, you don't really need this. And you can kind of spend more out of time or more time out of casting when you have a quicker cast heal because now you feel more comfortable playing it a little bit riskier, right? Because you can always respond that half second quicker than you could before, right? When you have a three second cast heal, uh, you're a little bit uncomfortable, like letting somebody sit for a bit. But when it's a 2.5 second cast, it's not quite as bad. So yeah, that's basically uh, the old abilities. And then we'll kind of go into the new abilities and then we're gonna touch on just, uh, we're gonna go back into this sheet really quick and just talk about maybe how some of these other things would affect uh, the leveling process. We will cover that last. So we'll kind of end it out with leveling. So penance, um, this is going to be the choice between, let's see, just to make sure, oh, yeah, penance and circle of healing. So again, I think this is just going to be, you know, is there enough AoE damage going out and like what is the mana cost on circle? Because I feel like Circle will be a mana efficient heal, but it's like, is there, is there going to be enough damage to justify it? And if there is, you still have to be careful when casting this sometimes because, so think about it this way, like a group just gets chunked out from miscellaneous mechanics and eventually they're at like 50%. You could Circle of Healing them to basically um, 80 to 90%, right? And that would basically top them off. Um, but the, the question you really have to ask yourself is, do they need to be topped off in that exact moment? Because this seems like it's going to cost... I think this actually got changed to 28% of base mana or something like that. So it's going to cost uh, quite a chunk of mana. And if they don't need to be put back right away, you may actually be better off in the short term spending that mana on the tank and like letting maybe like a Druid with Hots or something like that or a Paladin that has Beacon that's um, spot healing you know, cover those other members in a slower manner over time rather than instantly putting it back. Because the heal is mana efficient on that amount of targets, right, if it's getting full value. The problem just becomes that even if something is mana efficient, it can still take too much of your mana. You still have to be cognizant of your own mana and know, like, where it needs to be in that exact moment, right? Um, so that's, like, one of the things I'd worry about with Prayer of Healing early is I'm just concerned how detrimental it's going to be on your mana pool when you don't have a lot of regen so you may have to use this like really sparingly um which could just make penance better especially if there's not a lot of uh, situations where this is useful um so we're just gonna have to see like kind of how the raid damage comes out and stuff like that because it could be a converse scenario too where it, where we're like if a group is taking heavy raid damage and you do need to heal all five people at once then this becomes the best spell in the game, right? Because nothing else allows you to do that, and you would lose those people and they would die. So it's just going to depend on how things come out. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I doubt there's going to be like mechanics like that that do insane raid-wide group damage. Um, but yeah, if you don't use that, then I think you know penance is obviously going to be used for spotting people who are in trouble, uh, helping you catch back up on tanks spotting uh or uh, yeah being like another emergency mount for the tank and stuff like that uh, it's kind of nice because it, it allows you to play again towards that style of um maybe letting the tank sit for a little bit and you just have an extra tool if things do go bad things start trending towards like oh i need to catch back up on somebody then you can just always use the penance it's in your back pocket and you can use it when you need it um it allows you to play 
a majority of the time a bit more stingy and aggressively, I guess you could say, with your or conservatively with your mana. And then you always have this to kind of like bail you out, would be like the thought process, right? So that could be interesting. Uh, powered Barrier versus Prayer Mending. So I think you're just going to be taking Mending like all the time, and you're basically just going to be casting this constantly. Um, the only... Like basically as, as, as soon as it's off cooldown um, and is like done getting its value, you want to be casting the other one. Um, assuming there's damage going out, but uh, that's obvious, right? So like you're, <laughs> if they're only the tank taking damage, you're not casting this or something, but assuming any reasonable amount of sustained damage is going out, you're casting this, it's going to be one of your most mana efficient heals. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much just a... You're using this whenever it's up, when people are taking damage. And then... You know, you would maybe swap the barrier on fights where you saw that um, you really needed something like this. I don't think there's going to be a lot of fights that uh, require this, but we'll see. It's kind of a long cooldown, because keep in mind, classic fights tend to be very short. So, yeah, I don't know how much value we're really going to be able to derive for this, but this is going to be like a wait-and-see thing for sure. We're just going to have to see how the fights play out. Um... And then we'll go back one more time into the top one. So yeah, just to reiterate, I think you are going to be using Strength of Soul um, more often, probably than uh, Serendipity, just because you're not going to be using Flashy all the time. However, if you end up getting enough mana regen, or the fights last like short enough where you're able to pretty much use Flash, then Serendipity automatically becomes better, right? So it's just a matter of like, can you realistically use a decent amount of rank 1 flash heal via mana constraints? If you can, then Serendipity is the better rune. If you can't, um, then Strength of Soul is like by default the better rune, even though it's not insane. This got changed on um, PTR, so it actually now has the component where um, the warriors do not get... Like, basically anybody who has rage... They still take the they still get the rages if it was like damage dealt to them. So that that's kind of a good thing and makes this a bit more useful than it was before, but again, it's just gonna depend on flash heal and if you can use it right. So that's pretty much the uh, the healing guide. And to just wrap things up, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the other things if they could be useful while leveling. So when I look at this, um, Void Plague and Twisted Faith. I tend to think that um, you may just end up taking Twisted Fate if this is like an early option. And the reason for that is because like the dot is probably more damage overall, but it's another global you have to cast, and we don't know how much mana it costs, right? So if it's really mana efficient, then it's probably fine. And you could even maybe, it could even change your rotation, right? Where maybe you just double dot and then wand or something like that. So that could be an option. It's just really going to depend on the mana. We need that mana value. Um, and we need to see if it has a cast time or if it's instant or not. Um, and then... But I guess, like, so what I'm saying is if I if it's going to work how I think it's going to work, it's probably better off just to have the 20% damage on your Mind Blast. But we'll just have to see, right? Again, we need the mana, the mana cost here. I don't think you're going to be using this in conjunction with everything else. I'll at least say that. It's going to be something where if you do use this, it's going to take over for something else. Like, you're either going to put two dots on something, and you're going to drop maybe using uh, Mind Blast or something. Or you're going to drop um, uh, Smite if you already have the Holy uh, holy Fire, etc. So you may do Holy Fire into Double Dot. I'm not sure. Right. But it'll, it'll have to see how the mana plays out with that. Uh, for this, um, this like people would probably think this is good, but I don't. Um, I don't think it's going to be that great because it's you know you're just not going to be grinding three mobs at a time as a priest. That's just not going to be a thing based on them to also saying that like the damage has gone up on mobs, so you're not going to be able to tank three things at once, right? So that kind of goes out of the window. Um, this is interesting. 
I feel like th these two both could be used raw leveling, right? Because they're just damage reductions. This costs basically no mana, so it's probably pretty good. Um, this could actually be particularly good for spellcasters, things that have a cast time that you can easily predict the high amount of damage coming. You just drop the barrier right down right as the cast is about to go off. Um, and it's a great way to mitigate damage. You might protect yourself from a couple other casts. Homunculi is kind of like the uh, same thing, but for like more melee oriented things, right? It's just going to make them weaker. So I think that'd probably be the thing you, you use there. For sure, while leveling. And then, um, yeah, in terms of this, I think you're probably going to be using either Penance or Death because you're not going to be using Circle of Healing. And again, you're not going to be AoEing stuff down with Mines here unless you're in like a group. The, the one exception is like if you are a Shadow Priest doing like a Dungeon Cleave or something, right? Then I guess Shared Pain and Mines here would be what you'd go. But if you're not doing that, then you're not taking those really. Um, for this, it's going to be probably Death or Penance. Um, death can be good in like PvP, especially, so if you're going to be on a PvP server and mixing it up there, I could see using, uh, using death potentially. Penance also has its uses in PvP, and it's, uh, you know, it can just be like a nice little tool. I don't know if you're going to really be using this, uh, in your rotation, let's say. We'll have to see, let's see, we can go back to this. Um, holy damage to an enemy. Hmm. Doesn't necessarily seem that bad, but I'm kind of curious, like, when you get this, right? So I don't know if the damage, like, like clearly based on this damage, you don't get this at level one, right? Or if it does, it'd be scaled down. Because I know some of these you get very early. Like, I think every class gets a rune at level two. I assume it wouldn't be something like this. So, yeah, it just depends on when you get it and stuff like that, but I'd keep an eye out on Penance, because it definitely could change. If it's, like, very mana efficient and does good damage, then it definitely could change how you level up. But, um, yeah, aside from that, uh, I don't really... Yeah, I, th I think that, that would be the main thing to keep on, keep an eye on from that tier. So, yeah, that's basically the the whole video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you recently also for, I've been noticing a lot of people have been subscribing and leaving comments and stuff like that. I love reading the comments. And if you have any questions related to any of this stuff now or when the game launches, uh, please feel free to drop comments down below. And I'll do my best to answer them in the process of answering some of them right now, actually, or will be after this. Um, and definitely leave requests for anything you want to see. Like I said, I'm going to be doing one of these for each of the classes. Um, so don't worry about that. But if there's any other type of content, I think I'm going to make a video on my thoughts of GDKP, um, which is a little bit non-healing related, but I think that should be fun to talk about. So I'm going to talk about that maybe next or maybe finish the class guides and then do that. Um, and yeah, if you liked this, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the video. Obviously, if, if you didn't like it, you know, you don't have to do any of that. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys, and thank you for the support. And we'll talk to you next time.